Right now, life is confusing enough without adding to it a situation like a cognitive disorder. For folks who care for those with Alzheimer's disease, you can imagine how stressful life is right now. Julia Peclavano, executive director of the Alzheimer's Association Northwest Ohio chapter, is here with some help and some new information from a recent conference. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Amanda. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So this is a, a big conference that you guys usually do, right? This year had to take it virtual, right? Yes, that's correct. So um, last year I attended this conference in Los Angeles and we had about 6,000 people there, um, the world's top researchers in Alzheimer's dementia and brain research. This year, because we went online with the conference, it was supposed to be in Amsterdam, um, we uh, actually had 33,000 people participate in the conference. So it was fantastic. Um, and uh, just building that community of researchers uh, so that they're talking to one another and learning from one another is such an important aspect to, to uh, having successful research. Yeah, and speaking of that, you know, there were some takeaways uh, from this conference. And as I mentioned in the introduction here, uh, the coronavirus and this pandemic has really added some complications to folks who have Alzheimer's and those who are caring for them. So um, there is a study going on uh, about the impacts here of COVID-19. Uh, what have you guys uh, found in the short term, though? Well, we're just getting started with that and we're going to launch that. But in the short term, we do know that individuals with dementia have a tougher time complying with some of the um, high personal hygiene issues that we're so uh, aware of right now, which is washing hands, wearing a face covering in public places. Um, and um, so people uh, with dementia are typically more susceptible to COVID-19 if they do get it because of um, also because of uh, age and uh, other health issues. So we have to be very, very aware and conscious of the fact that this, unfortunately, COVID can impact people to a much greater degree who have dementia. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it makes sense. It's unfortunate, but, but it does make sense. Uh, as some of the other takeaways that you guys are looking at when you get together, as you said, and, and talk through some things, uh, what are some of the other takeaways you found from the conference? Well, really exciting news is that we're getting closer to a blood test for Alzheimer's disease. A lot of people will say immediately, well, I wouldn't want to know. But as we get closer to treatments for Alzheimer's, if people can be um, can can be made um, uh, aware of the fact that they have the disease before they have any symptoms, they can have medication before they have any symptoms and hopefully not develop those symptoms of dementia later on. Um, but we also know that now there's a correlation between people who take good care of their health um, even including getting vaccinations for flu every year and a pneumonia uh, shot between the ages of 65 and 75, lower their risk of developing dementia. Um, so those are two really great takeaways from this conference um, that you're going to be hearing more and more news about as uh, we get closer and the FDA is reviewing the first ever treatment for Alzheimer's disease, uh, a drug called aducanumab. Um, so we're hoping in the next five years uh, 10 years at the outside that we not only are able to better diagnose more quickly Alzheimer's disease, but also treat it. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you know, just taking care of your health, you know, getting those yearly flu shots can, uh, can help mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but what are some of the risk factors for folks? Well, high blood pressure, not controlled, diabetes, uh, being overweight, uh, a lot of things that a lot of us are experiencing in middle age and beyond um, are so important. And these things can be important as early as uh, the teen years, uh, adolescence. So, um, and particularly relevant in African-American and Lat uh, Latinx communities where people have a higher incidence of dementia. Yeah, we're, I was reading a little bit about that. Talk a little bit more about, you know, how Alzheimer's affects the, the Hispanic uh, population uh, differently. Well, um, people who are of Hispanic origin have about a one and a half times the rate of dementia that um, Caucasians do. And African-Americans, it's about two times. Mm. So uh, we do see some uh, serious disparities. Uh, probably a lot of reasons for that, uh, less biological and more having to do with health disparities and mm -hmm. access to health care, but also um, in, uh, in some of uh, 
the kinds of other health problems that people are experiencing uh, in those communities. Yeah, and these are some of the same things that we're talking about with uh, COVID-19 and, and how these underserved popula populations uh, are really being impacted by this. So we're seeing that mm -hmm. uh, with Alzheimer's as well. Uh, you know, and as we are still kind of in this pandemic, uh, families are really having a difficult time as they can't really visit their loved ones as much in nursing homes, and, and that has had a real big impact. It sure has. And we hear from people every day about that. Um, it's so challenging emotionally um, on, on families. It's, it's challenging for those individuals with dementia who aren't able to see their families. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week through our helpline at 800-272-3900. If people are having a challenging time, they have questions, they want to learn more about it, they're welcome to call our helpline any time of the day or night. We have qualified dementia experts on the other end of the line to talk to you. Yeah, so give them yeah, a call uh, yeah. as these challenges, unfortunately, they just seem to be increasing right now. So there is help, there is help available. And it's also nice to know that there is some hope out there as well uh, as you get back from these, these conferences and learn where mm -hmm. we are with research. So there is hope out there too. Julia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank 